Hey guys, it's Melissa Melton here and I know I don't I don't want to spend all of my time doing videos on freaking Ebola. I've been talking about this since before the media was even talking about it and it's just getting more and more ridiculous all the time. I have laid out exactly how ridiculous in this article I wrote about how ha the handling of this crisis by our government is like watching a bad horror film where we as viewers are yelling at our officials to go out the front door as the chainsaw wielding maniac is coming up behind them but instead they're slow motion jogging up the stairs that's what this is like it is horrible to watch how much fail is happening right the sheer amount of fail but i have a question for you because this is actually what's happening now we have arut shiva the israeli national news reporting that Thomas Duncan has died. They actually said Thomas A. Duncan in this story instead of Thomas E. Duncan. He's Thomas Eric Duncan. At least that's what we've been told. But this came out just now, and it's the only place in the world that's reporting this. Okay? And it, I'm going to read it real quick. Thomas A. Duncan, who became ill with Ebola after arriving from West Africa in Dallas two weeks ago, succumbed to the virus today, Sunday, reports Reuters. Duncan was fighting for his life at a Dallas hospital on today after his condition worsened a critical, according to the director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. The Dallas hospital that admitted him did not recognize the deadly disease at first and sent him home, only for him to return two days later by ambulance. Well, supposedly he returned by ambulance to a different hospital, so that's also incorrect. So, so far we have at least two inconsistent facts in this very, very short story, but they are reporting that he's dead, which is not being reported anywhere in our media whatsoever and actually Reuters isn't even reporting that Reuters is reporting that he's in now in critical condition up from serious condition and I've seen other reports that this man is now his kidneys have failed he's on a ventilator and he's on a dialysis machine and basically he's hooked up to a bunch of machines and if they were to turn off all of these machines this man would basically be dead but I just think it's very strange that they're reporting that he's dead in Israel and no one else is reporting that here. And I've seen uh, different theories on this, that they're waiting to report it till tomorrow. They want everyone to just have football today for some reason or another. I've also seen people say that maybe they're not reporting that he's dead because it's a battle of semantics because technically he's dead if they took all the machines off. But I've also heard people say that they're just wait, they're just waiting to admit that he's actually dead for as long as possible, keeping it from people. Because what they want to do is keep this idea going that in America, our medical system is just so fantastic, rigorous, and amazing that we can save everyone from Ebola like they can't do in Africa and keep people thinking that. It's not like it's just some random blog. This is an Israeli media network. They identify with religious Zionism. And they have a 24-7 news desk. I mean, they've been around since 1988. And they have a whole deal here. I mean, this isn't just some little outfit. So is this just a case of bad reporting where they just absolutely didn't check any of their facts at all and they got it completely wrong for some reason? Or is this like when the lady from the BBC was reporting on Building 7 having collapsed while it was still standing in the shot behind her live? seems to me they wouldn't just report this based on absolutely nothing. But again, they are citing Reuters, and that's not what Reuters is reporting. So do they know something the rest of us don't? Is our media here purposefully keeping the truth from people? Are they delaying the inevitable? They really screwed up on this one, as I said, as much as possible. As much as you can screw up on something. I'm not really sure how much more they could have screwed up here. They had guys freaking power washing this guy's Ebola-ridden vomit off the sidewalk and right down the storm drains of Dallas in t-shirts and jeans. I and mean, that's the level we're at. They kept his family with armed guard in his apartment for five days, six days, with his sweat-stained sheets and forced them to stay in there with all of his Ebola-covered stuff as if, you know, they were just making sure that these people would get it. Okay? They finally started sanitizing that stuff Friday and moved those people on Friday. But it's like they kept them in there for a whole week first just to see. I don't know. But they've handled this completely miserably. And now, I mean, obviously they're not telling us a lot. There's a lot they're not telling us. So what's up with this?